It occurred to me this week that Moses was rescued, named, and raised anonymously. This is a sadly overlooked part of the story, in my opinion. The story of Moses' accomplishments and overcoming of challenges and leadership is more than 40 chapters long. But this little group who did the rescuing and the naming and the raising only gets five lines. Maybe that's the anonymous part. Blessed are the anonymous, for they shall not be paid a lot of fame, nor shall they get glory or attention. So it's not just this anonymous part that caught my attention, but I also have been reflecting upon um, the energy. I mean, this was an entire group of people who devoted all kinds of energy to a single child. Saving Moses was not the work of one person. An entire group worked together to save the child. There was the princess, her servants, Moses' birth family, probably a few others. Friends and neighbors, for instance, were probably also involved. And they all worked together to create a safe space around this child. And by working together to save the life of one, they actually saved many. They saved an entire people. And it cost them. It cost them energy. It cost them time. It cost trust. That is a lot to reflect on. You know, I don't know about you, but I often feel like, you know, I want to I wanna make a difference. I want to do something of significance. And I want to do it fast. <laughs> right? I'm a, I'm a busy woman. I don't have time to mess around. Especially in this point of history where we are right now. In the midst of the protests and the pandemics, everything feels urgent. And so this story offers me several reminders it reminds me and encourages me to focus on the little thing and to allow plenty of time to create space for growth and to work as part of a team, to work anonymously, and to believe, to trust, to trust the process, to trust that when I know I'm doing the right thing, that the benefits will be many, maybe unseen. You know, back to the anonymous part, <laughs> because that might be the most curious and counter-cultural part of this story. Well, I don't know. Being counter-cultural is also very, very important, especially for followers of Jesus. You know, Jesus was always pushing against the status quo. Jesus was always pushing against the powers and the principalities of his culture, of his society. I often think, you know, if it's countercultural, it's probably Jesus. So, anyway, <laughs> what is fascinating and curious to me. In today's sacred story is that it is Pharaoh's daughter who is both anonymous and countercultural. The princess. She's willing to receive absolutely no attention. She works anonymously. And we sure don't know very much about her, do we? We don't know her name. We don't know her age. We don't know if she had other children. We don't know her marital status. We don't know if she had brothers and sisters. We don't know anything about her mother. We don't know if she was the firstborn or the baby or in the middle. 
and we don't know anything about her relationship with her father. I wonder if Pharaoh knew she fostered Hebrew children. I wonder if she ever publicly differed with him. I wonder what her relationship with her father, the Pharaoh, was like. I wonder if she was his favorite and maybe indulged. Or maybe she was one of so many children he couldn't keep any of them straight. We don't know much about this countercultural anonymous princess, but what we do know, she was an ally. She was an ally. She was a person of privilege who used her privilege to work for justice on behalf of the oppressed. That's what an ally does. An ally uses their privilege to work for justice on behalf of those who can't. So we don't know much about the princess, but we do know that she was an ally, and we also know she was in it for the long haul. She wasn't there just for a moment. She was part of the movement. Hmm. Not just for a moment, but for the movement. There is a lot in this story for us to reflect upon. There's a lot in these five verses for us to notice. Being an ally is not for the faint of heart. Working for justice is not a quick and easy task. Blessed are the allies, especially those who work anonymously. Blessed are the allies, especially those who do the hard things behind the scenes. Blessed are those who work tirelessly and who work together. Blessed are the allies who network and who do the hard things.